Hi there. Now in this particular video what I want to do is show you how we go about sketching this particular curve r equals a times all of 1 plus cos theta and this is a curve you're going to meet lots of times and it's given a name it's called the cardioid and you'll see why it's called a cardioid when we finish sketching it. Now you'll notice that it's defined for theta greater than or equal to zero radians but less than or equal to two pi radians and that's because for any angle between this interval here cos theta is going to go between minus one and one and then if you have one plus any number between minus one and one multiplied by a which is a positive constant r will always be positive so that's why we can get away with theta being defined for any value between naught and 2 pi radians. So if that's the case, what I'd want to do is build up a set of tables. So if I was to look at, say, the first quadrant where theta was any angle between naught and pi upon 2, then when theta equals 0, the cosine of 0 is 1, so you're going to get 1 plus 1 is 2 times a is going to be 2a. Now when theta equals pi upon 4, if you do the cosine of pi upon 4, add it to 1, you get roughly 1.7. So r is going to be equal to roughly 1.7a. And then for pi upon 2 radians, cosine of pi upon 2 is 0, so you just end up with r equaling 1a, or just simply a. So, where would these points be? Well, when theta equals 0, r is equal to 2a, so theta equals 0, r equals 2a is going to be this point here. Then moving round, when theta equals pi upon 4 radians, r is 1.7a. So here's 1a, 2a, so 1.7a is going to be roughly about there. And then for pi upon 2, r is equal to a, so that's clearly that point there. Now if we look at theta between pi upon 2 and pi radians, build up a table for this. Okay, we know that when theta equals pi upon 2, it's a. And when theta equals pi radians, cosine of pi radians is minus 1, so you end up with 1 minus 1 is 0, so r equals 0 at this point here. Now when you put 3 pi upon 4 radians into here, and then add 1, you get a value of roughly 0 0.3. So times it with the a, you get r equaling roughly 0.3a. So again, if we plot these points now on our polar graph here, what do we get? Well, when theta equals 3 pi upon 4 radians, which is on this line here, r is equal to 0.3a. So that's going to be a point, say, roughly about there, I would say. And then when theta equals pi radians, that's along here now, r equals 0. So we're back at the pole here at that point there. Next I'm going to look at the third quadrant for angles between pi radians and 3 pi upon 2 radians. This section through here in other words. So we've seen that when theta equals pi r equals 0. Now when it equals 3 pi upon 2 the cosine of 3 pi upon 2 is 0. So you just end up with r equaling a. And for 5 pi upon 4, if you put this into here, 1 plus the cos of 5 pi upon 4, you end up with roughly 0 0.3 again. So times it with the a, r is roughly 0 0.3a. So let's just plot those points now on the polar graph. So when theta equals 5 pi upon 4 radians, that's along here, r is 0.3a. Same as what we had out here. So it's going to be down here. Okay. And then when theta equals 3 pi upon 2 radians, okay, this is down here, r equals a. So we're down at this point here. 
Now finally, if we look at theta going between 3 pi upon 2 radians to 2 pi radians, that's in the fourth quadrant through here, then what do we get? Well, we've already worked this one out over here. R was equal to A. And when theta equals 2 pi, we end up with the cos of 2 pi, which is 1. So you end up with R equaling 1 plus 1, 2 times A, 2A. And if you do 7 pi upon 4, 1 plus the cosine of 7 pi upon 4 turns out to be roughly 1.7. Times it with the A and you've got R equaling 1.7A. And again, if we just plot these points on the polar graph. So what we've got then is when theta equals 7 pi upon 4 radians, that's along this line here, R equals 1.7A. Same as what we had up here. So we're going to have a point, say, somewhere around there. So can you see what we're going to get then if we were to sketch this curve? Well, it's going to look like this. Now I'll show you what it's going to look like if we were to plot it in slow motion. OK, so you should be able to see that radius going round there. I'll do it again for you. OK, well I hope that's given you some idea then how we go about plotting this particular curve. And it's called a cardioid then, and hopefully you can see why. It's got this kind of heart shape. And it's symmetrical about the line theta equals zero, our initial line.